and the system come crashing down. Over the years, the fractional reserve system and its integrated network of banks backed by a central bank has become the dominant money system of the world. At the same time, the fraction of gold backing the debt money has steadily shrunk to nothing. The basic nature of money has changed. In the past, a paper dollar was actually a receipt that could be redeemed for a fixed weight of gold or silver. In the present, a paper or digital dollar can only be redeemed for another paper or digital dollar. In the past, privately created bank credit existed only in the form of private banknotes, which people had the choice to refuse, just as we have the choice to refuse someone's private check today. In the present, privately created bank credit is legally convertible to government-issued fiat currency, the dollars, loonies, and pounds we habitually think of as money. Fiat currency is money created by government fiat, or decree, and legal tender laws declare that citizens must accept this fiat money as payment for debt or else the courts will not enforce the obligation. So now the question is, if governments and banks can both just create money, then how much money exists? In the past, the total amount of money in existence was limited to the actual physical quantities of whatever commodity was in use as money. For example, in order for new gold or silver money to be created, more gold or silver had to be found and dug out of the ground. In the present, money is literally created as debt. New money is created whenever anyone takes a loan from the bank. As a result, the total amount of money that can be created has only one real limit, the total level of debt. Governments place an additional statutory limit on the creation of new money by enforcing rules known as fractional reserve requirements. Essentially arbitrary, fractional reserve requirements vary from country to country and from time to time. In the past, it was common to require banks to have at least $1 worth of real gold in the vault to back $10 worth of debt money created. Today, reserve requirement ratios no longer apply to the ratio of new money to gold on deposit, but merely to the ratio of new debt money to existing debt money on deposit in the bank. Today, a bank's reserves consists of three things. The amount of government-issued cash that the bank has in its vault, the amount of credit it has with the central bank, and the amount of already existing debt money the bank has on deposit. To illustrate this in a simple way, let's imagine that a new bank has just started up and has no depositors yet. Investors have paid for the bank's infrastructure and have supplied it with sufficient cash to meet the demand for cash withdrawals. Typically, cash in the vault will amount to no more than $1 for every $20 or $30 that could be demanded from the bank. The bank has joined the central bank system, which permits the new bank to borrow cash from the central bank if it's needed. The door is open, and the new bank welcomes its first loan customer. The customer needs $10,000 to buy a car. On approval, the bank creates an account for the borrower and types in that the bank owes the borrower $10,000. This $10,000 is not taken from anywhere. It's created on the spot. The borrower does not take this money out in cash. Instead, he writes a check on his account to buy the car. The seller then deposits this newly created $10,000 check at her bank. At a ratio of nine to one, this new $10,000 deposit allows the seller's bank to create a new loan of $9,000. And if that $9,000 is then deposited by a third party, 
it becomes the legal basis for a third issue of bank credit, this time for the amount of $8,100. Like one of those Russian dolls, each layer of which contains a smaller doll inside, each new deposit contains the potential for a slightly smaller loan in a decreasing series. Now, at any stage, if the money created is taken out in cash and not deposited at a bank, the process stops. That's the unpredictable part of the money creation mechanism. But more likely, at every step, the new bank credit money will be deposited at a bank, and the reserve ratio process can repeat itself over and over until almost $100,000 of brand new bank credit money has been created within the banking system. All of this new money has been created entirely from debt, and all transactions have been carried out with bank credit. None of the banks involved have needed to use any of the cash in their vaults. What's more, under this ingenious system, the books of each bank in the chain must show that the bank has 10% more on deposit than it has out on loan. This gives banks a very real incentive to seek deposits in order to be able to make loans, supporting the general but misleading impression that loans come out of deposits. Now, it can't be said that any one bank got to multiply the initial $10,000 of bank credit into $100,000 of bank credit. However, the banking system is a closed loop. Bank credit created at one bank becomes a deposit in another, and so on and so on. In a theoretical world of perfectly equal exchanges, the banks would owe each other nothing at the end of the day, and the $10,000 created out of thin air as a loan by the first bank could indeed become almost $100,000 of new loan money in the banking system. If that sounds ridiculous, try this. Actual reserve ratios can be much higher than 9 to 1. For some types of accounts, 20 to 1 and 33 to 1 ratios are common. There are also many exceptions where no reserve requirements apply at all. So, while the rules are complex, the common sense reality is actually quite simple. Banks can create as much money as we can borrow. Despite the endlessly presented mint footage, government-created money typically accounts for less than 5% of the money in circulation. More than 95% of all money in existence today was created by someone signing a pledge of indebtedness to a bank. What's more, this bank credit money is being created and destroyed in huge amounts every day as new loans are made and old ones repaid. Banks can only practice this money system with the active cooperation of government. First, governments pass legal tender laws to make us use the national fiat currency. Secondly, governments allow private bank credit to be paid out in this government currency. Thirdly, government courts enforce debts. 